Hi, I'm John Maida, and I'm going to walk you through a few pages in the Design and Tech Report. Just three pages. So the first page I'll talk about is the one on tools. It turns out that tools are changing a lot. And if you think about all the tools we have access to, it's kind of amazing. Which tools should we use? Depends on whether you're working as an individual or on a team. We have a few hypotheses about which tool is best for you as an individual. Sketch. <laughs> but as a group, it's unclear. Uh, there's so many possibilities out there. As a designer or developer, it's hard not to love tools because tools help get things done. In 1981, there was this thing called a Quantel paint box. It was a magical way to create videos and paint on them. It was extraordinary. 1984, Mac Paint. The first example of a consumer class painting system. It was a big deal. Drawing ellipses until that time were impossible. You would drag and drag and wait for the lips to catch up. But no more. Mac Paint changed everything. Late 1980s, Adobe Photoshop brought the ability to edit color photos. Color photos were a big deal at the time. We'd never seen the ability to do that at the consumer level. Notice we'd seen it before in early 1980, and this was very expensive, and suddenly anyone could edit a color photo. And then prototyping tools are also an important kind of design tool because it began to connect developer thinking into the tool itself. For instance, HyperCard lets you script things. Scripting on HyperCard was a big deal at the time because there was no such thing as an easy way to visually construct page-like things like this. Look familiar? Yes. HTML, World Wide Web. HyperCard was the World Wide Web before everything was worldwide or web together. 1990, Macromind Director was also a big deal, a way to create color versions of scripted things, and it made it possible to ship applications as Macromind packages. It was pretty extraordinary. And they would be shipped over CD-ROM, of course. 2013, I love this chart by Emily Schwartzman, which talks about the different kinds of prototyping tools and all the pitfalls and complexities in them. Fast forward to 2018, tools are going to be changing in the future. Machine intelligence, we can expect, will make things much more easy for the people who make things, which goes well beyond how you draw things, and so into the actual projects, into the overlap to code, into the fact that many people are working together. Think of GitHub for designers and products in general. It hasn't happened yet, but it'll come in the future, and machine intelligence will definitely make it a lot easier for all of us. In the meantime, in 2018, if you're looking for a simple tool for illustration that is a good investment in the future, check out Sketch if you haven't converted already. I have a URL here to show you what I've learned about different tools for individuals versus teams. The next page we'll look at is on inclusion. Mm -hmm.